Hello. Uh, in this session, we're going to look at conducting heat. So I hope you remember from our previous video that heat is basically just how much the particles are vibrating. The more heat there is, the hotter something is, the more its particles vibrate. So in today's uh, lecture, we're going to be looking at the idea of conducting heat. Uh, and the key thing that we're interested in today uh, is to understand how conduction happens and what affects it. And we're going to think about how that uses particles. We're going to think about the idea of what makes a good conductor and what makes an insulator. Um, and we're probably not going to look much at uh, other ways of transferring heat today, uh, because that's stuff that we will come to in a future session. So let's start off by thinking about what is conduction and how does it work. So conduction is a process in which heat is transferred directly through a material. So I want you to imagine that you've put an empty pan on the hob uh, and then you touch it. What would you feel? Well, if you remember back to our last uh, lesson, you should remember that the direction of heat is always from hot to cold. So the heat will transfer this way into your finger from the material. Uh, in this instance, heat will travel from your finger into the ice because heat always goes from hotter to colder. So we're, we're trying to think now about the more general case of all kinds of heat transfer. And what really is it that goes on uh, when you touch something? What's making that heat go from one place to somewhere else? Um, and it all comes down again to the idea of what heat really is. We know that heat is caused by vibrations. So if you imagine uh, in the bottom right corner over here, sorry I keep bringing up this little annoying toolbar, um, but if I put my, my cursor over here, you can see that I've got one particle that's being heated. Now think of what's gonna happen to that. If you imagine my fist is the particle, this particle is going to start vibrating. And as it gets more heat energy, it's gonna to start to vibrate even more. But in a solid, the particles are all next to each other like this. So, as one particle starts to vibrate, it's going to knock into the particle next to it, and that's going to cause this particle over here to start to gain kinetic energy too. So as the two collide into each other, they start to transfer energy, and through that direct vibration, we get energy being transferred from one place to another. And it spreads out all the way through a solid with that heat moving through it. Um, so if you think about a metal bar, um, I have these little happy smiling faces which are representing uh, the individual particles in the bar. And then I bring in a candle. And what you can see is that pretty quickly the heat energy is transferred particle to particle all the way through the metal bar until one end is hot and the other end becomes warmer and warmer as that heat energy moves through it. Now, one of the things that you're going to be doing uh, during your lesson time is you're going to be thinking about how does conduction, or how can we see conduction? So one of the big practicals that I'm going to ask you to do for me will involve you working with a uh, different set of metals and seeing if you can actually watch those metals change uh, or conduct as they go. Um, and we'll see how you get on with that during the lesson. There you go, you can just see that it's become hot at that end, and now the heat's transferred all the way through the bar. Something that's a little bit, uh, taking this a bit more tricky, uh, is the idea of what is a conductor and what is a bad conductor. So a conductor, in the unit we've just done, electricity, a conductor was anything that conducted electricity. So let's current go through it. In this topic, we're thinking about conductors slightly differently. So conductors for heat are any materials that allow heat to transfer through them easily. Now, most metals, turns out, are really, really good conductors, both of electricity and of heat. 
And the reasons for that are the same in both cases. When it comes to uh, transferring heat uh, around a material, it's actually the same reason uh, makes something a good conductor of electricity as makes it a good conductor of heat. And it's these electrons here. You can see that in a metal, we have fixed positive metal ions. I'm just going to um, remind you, these are the ions here. So those are fixed and the ions can't move. But the electrons that surround them, those electrons are free to move. And in electricity, those electrons would carry a current that way. But in a uh, metal that's conducting heat, the idea is that these electrons can carry the heat energy very quickly because the electrons can move around, crash into other atoms, and transfer the vibrations really easily too. Insulators are materials that don't conduct heat well. Um, and examples that are air, wood, glass, and plastic. Now maybe just have a little think, what do they all have in common? Excuse me. Well, the most basic idea of why they work is because they have, uh, or why air particularly is a really bad conductor. Air is a really bad conductor because the molecules are not close en enough together, or close together enough, uh, to allow heat to transmit. So if you think, we said that heat is transmitted by vibrations crashing into each other like this, but if there's a big gap between them, and I've got one vibrating over here, it can't reach the particle over here. So if you look in this diagram, um, I've got big air gaps between my particles, or not even air gaps because there's nothing in that gap. Um, it's literally a gap of nothingness. So because there are these gaps, the particles can't crash into each other, so I don't get that heat being transferred. Other materials that don't have air gaps can still be very poor conductors of heat because if they don't have a very regular structure, if the particles aren't all packed in right close next to each other, they still might be vibrating one way and missing the particle over here, so they can't transmit those vibrations through them. So here's a little test for you. I've got two metal benches, sorry, two benches outside. Um, and here's the temperature display. This is in Fahrenheit, so this is in centigrade. Um, what temperature will the two benches be at? Well, if you remember what we said last lesson, we said that heat always transfers from hot to cold. So if one of these benches was warmer than its surroundings, then heat would move from the bench out into the surroundings. And if the surroundings were warmer than the benches, the bench was colder than the surroundings, then heat would transfer into the bench. So what we can work out from this is, provided the benches have been outside for a fairly long time, the benches are going to be exactly the same temperature as the air. And that's true, they will be. Uh, you can go and try. If you go and put a thermometer against the bench, you will find that any material outside is all at a uniform same temperature. Which of course brings a question, which one will feel colder? Will it feel colder to go up and touch a metal bench or a wooden bench? Or when you think about this in our context of Malaysia, if two objects have been out in the sun, which one will feel hotter? Well the one that will feel colder uh, when it's a cold day is the metal bench. But we also know that if you've ever tried to go up the back stairs and touch the railing when the sun's been on it, Touching metal when it's hot, the metal feels hotter than wood. So if you ever have a sauna in your, in your apartment, uh, you might know that all the materials in there are made of wood, because wood doesn't feel as hot, it doesn't burn you. So how can that be? How can it be that a metal will feel colder when it's cold, and it will feel hotter when it's hot, when we know that both the metal and the wood are the same temperature? Well, it all comes down to conduction. Because metal is a really good conductor, the metal will change the temperature of your hand really easily. So on a cold day, like in this photograph, when your hand touches the metal bench, 
that heat is really quickly conducted out of your finger into the bench and your finger gets cold. So it feels cold. When you touch the wood, the wood is a really bad conductor of heat. So the heat very slowly leaves your hand and goes into the bench. So your hand doesn't get as cold, so it doesn't feel like the bench is as cold. Similarly, on a really, really hot day, if you touch metal, you might burn your finger. And that's because the metal's very hot when you touch it. The heat can very quickly transfer into your finger. But when it's a piece of wood on a hot day, the wood's a bad conductor, so the heat really slowly enters your hand. So it's not actually that metal or woods are any different temperatures if they've been outside for a long time. We know from the fact that heat always transfers from hot to cold, we know they'll be at the same temperature. But how good a conductor they are affects whether they will feel hotter or colder, which I think is pretty cool. So let's do some checkpoint questions to see if you've got that. First question for you, uh, what causes conduction? Okay, so you should get that conduction is caused by the hot particles vibrating, colliding with their neighbours, and passing on energy. Please be really careful. Uh, this is completely and utterly wrong. There is no such thing as heat particles, and yet every year somebody will write about heat particles. There are no special little particles that arrive when we're talking about heat. It is just that some particles are hot and they carry their heat around. Uh, so it's the particles themselves that make up the material that have different temperatures. Which of these is the best insulator? Okay, so we've got three different materials there. Hopefully you realise that it's definitely not going to be metal because metal is a really good conductor, so it can't be that one. So it's between foam, wood or plastic. Well, foam, foam has lots and lots of air pot pockets in it, and we know that air is a super bad conductor. So foam will be the worst, sorry, the best insulator or the worst conductor, it means the same thing. Um, but, whoops, no, the tick should be there. Um, but hopefully you also realised that uh, wood and plastic are also going to be pretty bad uh, conductors as well, so good insulators too. Which is the best conductor? Okay, no prizes for guessing this one because I did just tell you the answer. That one is metal. And for here, why is metal the best type of conductor? Okay, as we talked about earlier, it's got those free electrons and those free electrons can travel quickly through the material, passing on the energy. Okay, I hope that was useful to you. As always, if you have any questions, please come and speak to me during the lesson.